some market forces were going to have an impact, positive impact, on our energy <coughs> use utilization. Yeah. Well, you still have the same same. Place I know size. you disagree, yeah. but that was <laughs> no, no. I, I, I'd agree with you. The current the current market size is just about replacement size. Yeah, and replacement sizes are not about on ten, the way about down. 10 million, 10 to 12 million sales a year replaces us. We are, we own, a, uh, we own a piece of a recycling thing. We are recycling in New England, crushing more cars than a bill is sold. Mm -hmm. The crush rate's higher than the sell rate. In New England? In New England. Mm -hmm. well, in California, of course, yeah. total opposite. What do you attribute that to? The big machines, I don't think you can get it. I understand why that. Do you think it uh, why, do, why do you think... Uh, I'm a physicist, I'm not allowed to... Well, you know, there's another stat that I think makes sense a lot of it is that the average age of the U.S. car is nine years now. No, it's Which seven. is amazing. The average is nine, they scrap out at 17. You used to scrap out on an average of nine years. So the age is doubled, doubled in about 20 yeah. years. And we have now, now more cars on the road than there are drivers, and their car life has doubled. We have a market saturation problem that truly General Motors doesn't understand. Well, I hope we don't have more cars on the road than drivers. I don't think we have more cars. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're on the road, that'd be a serious problem. Maybe, maybe that's true. <laughs> You've never driven two cars at the same time. <laughs> you don't know what you're mistaken. One point two cars. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> drive, maybe, maybe. But it is, it is an issue that the big companies think that we're still interested. This is the thing right. that has to come through the software. <laughs> Nobody's interested in lower cost. People are interested in response to demand, both in energy, sustainability, <coughs> utilization. But the trend in all the big companies is to reduce cost at any cost, which is an interesting story. Like they'll sell more, like they'll be better, or something. No, my, my own take is the true revolution in the automobile business will come when they realize they're responsible for vehicles already on the road. Mm -hmm. And they got to do something. The, the recycling rate, though, for vehicles is very, very high. Yeah, sure. That's very high. And then there's, there's an old scenario called Three Day Car. Came out in Nissan, 1988. You present that to people. Present it to the manufacturing engineer, others, more flexible tooling and studio do do and software like more flexible in the industry, la 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 la. It was on. Present it to somebody outside the industry. If you got to take the car back, why the hell did you sell it? You're in our own business. No, the profits in there taking it back. We're in Germany. I didn't say the what. I was just saying here. Remember, you showed you the map of Germany versus yeah. the map of the United States. One of the things the economists they interrupt him again because I do that often. He does it often to me. We've been together how many years now? I don't know. Five Hundred. <laughs> yeah. And the economists say it's interesting, because up until about 1910 to 1920, all of the human species was in a production-limited environment. You didn't have enough health, housing, um, babies, food, heat, shelter. Now, except for two, which we'll talk about in a second, we're consumption-limited. And consumption-limited means waste, because you're wasting all of the marketing effort, Oh, you're making multiple models of new cars, you're doing all of that kind of thing. There are two areas that are not consumption limited at the moment, medical health and space travel. Okay? That's, yeah. that's, so it's interesting to talk about those. Yeah, well, we, we can argue about that. Two, yeah. two ways to approach. We do, we do, typically. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, maybe that stuff doesn't need to be done if you're into the lean type movement. That's to take the waste out. What's the problem well, with that approach? takes the waste out of the customer sees it. The customer will pay for it. It's not waste. And just because it makes money doesn't mean it's a neat deal. I like Warren Buffett's 20-year-old definition of the ideal business model. Cigarettes. Take them for a penny, sell them for a buck, the customer's addicted. How much better can it get? So to jump in, so I have to, to pick up on Ken's earlier comment, the set phrase, a frame that symposium, I would say, the other place where we are production limited is exactly the next challenge. How do we retool all the all society organizations? Since we're production limited, I don't know where it's going. Because, for example, we, we have all of these ideas how we could organize the infrastructure, communication, etc., etc. The many networks we depend on, 
um, so that they would be more sustainable. But I don't think we know how to retool uh, all of those networks. No. And we may not have the capacity to retool the networks. No, That's yeah. what at least I was thinking of when you showed the diminishing options that we have run into. Anyway, that's um, yeah. some of the things so, that so we are running into. to making use of, the uh, first one is conservation. That's what the environmentalists would call it, conservation. Manufacturing people just be called eliminating the waste, but we don't even know what efficiency is. We use money. We use nature's efficiency, thermodynamics, minimum energy process. My wife says get on a diet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one way to do that is this. You're fairly familiar with it, including refertilize the ground. So that's renewable, sustainable, whatever. This is a too long a name, but there's too much for some super brain to figure this out. Uh, the government is not likely to figure it out. There may be some beneficial policies, but they're not likely to figure it out. It's where boots are on the ground where something's going to be figured out. And unless you have a work organization that can concentrate on a piece of this, they don't figure it out. You know, one size fits all general policy winds up with regulation and doesn't fit everybody and so you, know, you, you get it like gun laws and everything else people don't fight over. Beyond regulation. And by the way, I hear over and over again, how can we anticipate the regulation? Well, get ahead of it. You know, the companies are really good filling out the reports is a nuisance, but that's all it is. Common mission goals. If you're working for money, strictly for money, people argue over money. If there's a little higher purpose of some sort, like we're all on a lifeboat and you got to survive, we might unite around that. Don't bet on it. You may decide to throw somebody overboard, but it's your better man. The second one, Behavioral skills. We underestimate that. First time I ever heard the term culture, my response was, I'm an engineer, I ain't got no culture, go see some artist. <laughs> so, but this is pretty important. The difference I've seen in companies is right there. Can they actually talk to each other objectively? And do you think a lot of intelligence is going to save the world? You have never been to a faculty meeting. <laughs> Over here. Rigorous learning yeah, methodology. We, we definitely still need to have so We heard this it. discussion this morning. I, I rather like Toyota's design approach. What you get out of Toyota is not a great deal of technical adventure hitting the road. What you do get, shorthand is test, then design. So they put the money into the technology, test it all out, then when you're ready to design a car, you pull out of the a group of packages that you're pretty sure is going to work. And now you try to fit the car to what you think this customer wants. And by the way, the chief engineer lives with customers for six months before the project begins. That job is to assemble what Toyota can to deliver to that customer that you're pretty sure is going to work. And what you get is a reasonably high quality vehicle. It probably is not state of the art on anything, but it works. Pretty high quality. Their system for doing that is pretty interesting. I mean, you can software it up all, all you choose. They're kind of behind on the software, and I think they still are. But the methodology is interesting. Whenever you finish a program, project, or solving a problem, record it in the system on one page. One page. Record the negatives, too. That's very important. If you see a problem like this, get on it. Refer to the system, but that has to be built into the into the work. If it's just a happenstance thing, it doesn't happen. And if people are too competitive, they won't tell you what they know. Hey Doc. No. I, I would like to put Terry's presentation on the desktop. I'd like to keep this moving along. I know we okay. started late. Yeah. How well, I, I can react about this, so I'd like to talk to you about it. So, so what I would suggest is, let's use this time if you've got some feedback you want to give Doc.